Hi, my name's Kate Philbin, and today I'm going to be looking at these Kohinoor stackable palettes of watercolours. They're very inexpensive, very affordable, and I picked these up the other day on a gallery visit with a group of adult learners. I know some of my learners bought these paints, and so I would like to um, review them in the hope that that's going to be helpful to people, and I'm going to give you a quick demo of how you could use these in quite an easy way to make a little landscape. So what do I like about these watercolours? Well, they attracted me because they are transportable and I have recently received some very lovely expensive watercolours for Christmas, but they're in little bottles and that would be really difficult to take outside. So these appealed to me because there were plenty of colours and they were in this stackable palette. But as an ed adult education teacher and um, a creative practitioner working in the community, I always am looking for things that are really affordable and accessible for people who might want to start a watercolour painting or other kinds of crafts and not spend an absolute ton of money. So these are great because I think they work out about 27 pence per little pan. Um, I think you can actually get these cheaper than I got them. I did buy them in a local gallery for £6.50, as I said, but uh, I think you can get them, them on Amazon and what have you for a, a bit cheaper than that, but uh, you'd have to have a look around. There's a little mixing area in the lid, so you could take this out with you when you go outside, but I would personally prefer if I was inside to use a different palette because I like to work on a white palette. Um, now, they, there are lots of different colours. They uh, come apart and uh, there's another layer of colour within each section. So there's 24 different colours in this pack, which is nice. Um, there's no purple for some reason. Purple is not a colour I use terribly often um, and you can mix it of course but it's strange that with all those colours there wouldn't be a purple. Um, they do leave a little chalky finish when when you put them on. They're not like other watercolours that I've used. Um, most watercolours don't sit on the top of the paper. These are a little bit more like a poster paint. I wouldn't even say they're like a gouache because they don't have that kind of finish of a gouache. They, um, they, they have a more chalky finish. They remind me a bit of poster paints that children use. And they are kind of at that price point, to be honest. You know, you could certainly buy these for a child and they could use these quite easily but they do water down quite well to make them a bit more like watercolours um but if I was to recommend some watercolours I may not recommend these because I have um used other watercolours uh cheaper brands from places like the works and the range with classes that work in the way of normal watercolours so I wouldn't necessarily say these are like normal watercolours they're not particularly typical um so in that respect I might not recommend them but um, for what they are, I mean, they, you know, they are very cheap, accessible, affordable. You could take these out with you and make some colour sketches and some colour notes in your journal when you were going outside. So I'm going to um, go over to the desk and create a really simple landscape without any drawing um, that will work on the skills of mixing neutral colours but also on the skill of glazing as well which is layering watercolour layers over each other so that there's transparency and that you can still see the layer underneath. So I'll see you at the desk. So these are the four palettes laid out and you can see there's lots of different nice bright colours there. Um, I've got a white plastic palette or you could use a, a white plate. Uh, I find it easier to mix on white because you can see exactly what you're mixing. Um, I've also got a jar of water and you want to make sure you've got enough water and you're not, um, you know, you if you've not got enough water, you're going to dirty it quite quickly. And then I've got some brushes, some some big round um, brushes that I like. This is, this is a mop brush. Um, and it's a synthetic brush. I don't want to use any animal based brushes. So um, it's, it's a mop brush, but it's not a massive mop brush. And this one is one of my favourite brushes. It's a size 10 Escoda Versatile brush. Now, these are really expensive. I've only got two of them consequently, but they are brilliant. They're actually a, um, a travel brush. So they pop inside the lid like this and they're really good if you're taking things out, especially if you're 
going um, on holiday or something like that, they pack down really small. So these would be a nice thing um, to use with a very small set of watercolours like this. And you can see it's got a hole in the end and that's to let any water out so that it doesn't kind of go mouldy if you if you cap it before it's dry. Um, I'm not going to use a pencil. The paper that I'm using today is this Derwent watercolour paper. I went on a, a really small um, class, online class with Derwent. It cost something like £5. So it was really reasonable. And as part of that class, they sent you this watercolour pad. So I was really chuffed. Um, and it's a, a 300 uh, GSM or £140 watercolour. It's actually really smooth. Um, it's not very textured like the watercolour papers that I often use so this is going to be the first time I'm using this today so this is going to be new for me as well but it is a proper watercolour um, paper so it should be good for taking um, the, the amount of water that we're going to be putting on it and it's an A4 size and what I've done is I've used some masking tape and I've masked off a square in the middle and um, I've done this because it does leave a neater edge now, when you're putting masking tape on a piece of paper, you do really need to make sure that the paper is completely dry before you pull it off. Otherwise, you might end up pulling off the surface of your paper as well. And you don't want to be um, doing a lovely painting and then ruining it by um, by ripping it with the masking tape afterwards. Um, you can make the masking tape a bit less sticky by putting it on your jeans or something like that before you put it on the paper. Um, so we'll, we'll see how we get on with that. And and I, I'm going to actually, because this is a mixed media paper, I got this little Posca marker as well. I do like Posca markers. They're acrylic markers um, and it's a white one. And I'm going to just finish off with a few details in this Posca marker. Um, for speed, I'm going to dry this with a hairdryer. You can dry in between layers. And with this technique, you must make sure that it's dry between each layer. Otherwise, water water just runs into um, other pools of water. So if you don't make sure it's dry, you won't get the glazing effect. You'll just get a kind of wet in wet effect, which is which won't give you the definition that we're looking for in this project. To mix neutral colours, we're going to take the colour that we want um, which I'm, I really like this um, very dark blue here. I did initially think it was a purple, but then I realised that it wasn't. Um, and I'm going to put some of that into this uh, palette. And how we mix neutral colours is we take some of the colour, the complementary colour on the colour wheel um, and put it into it. So with blue, that's... Um, that's orange. I had to think for a second there. I've been doing this all week. Um, and what happens is it gives you a much more neutral, you can see how that's gone grey. And that's the kind of colour we want. And that's because we're painting a landscape. And if you look at a distant landscape, what you'll notice is that in the background, um, the, the things that are furthest away from you are very pale and um, very desaturated. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint some kind of distant mountains. I'm not going to make uh, particular shapes or anything like that. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to paint some kind of general mountain shaped things in the background. And I'm going to continue this all the way down to the bottom. Um, and that's to give it the layers. So what we're, what we're trying to achieve is a kind of even-ish layer of, of the whole thing. And um, I'm, I'm doing that by kind of going, going down like this. I mean, I like texture in things, but at a distance like this, the further things are away, the less texture you would have in them anyway. So that to me is a reasonably uh, even layer. And I'm going to dry that now with the hairdryer. Okay, so the first layer's dry and you can see that because I've put the hairdryer on it, it's kind of um, slightly melted the glue on the masking tape. So I'm going to put it back down a bit. And so now what, what we're going to do is going to keep adding more um, pigment into this colour, keeping it neutral, but making it a, a more saturated colour every time. So what I mean by saturated is 
Um, if you imagine that you've got, this is the best explanation that anybody ever ever gave, I think, um, for this uh, to me, is if you imagine that you've got a post box, a red post box, and it is just freshly painted, the paint will be very saturated. If you imagine then that post box in 10 years time, if it's not been repainted, it will still be exactly the same colour of red, but the red will be desaturated because of the sunlight and things that is faded, basically, the sunlight that's fallen on it. So when in a landscape, the colours, as you go back, they get less saturated and um, they're lighter as well. So I think, you know, we would commonly say, well, it's lighter in the background. So what we're doing is we're adding a bit more colour, um, so perhaps a bit less neutral, and a bit more saturation as we come further forward. Now, what I want to do, and I haven't um, got a piece of paper, is to just test this, just to make sure that it's not too strong. So I'm going to get a piece of paper and come back. So I've tested it on a scrap piece of paper, and I think it's going to be about right. We want a little bit more blue and a little bit um, more of a saturated colour. And at this point, I'm going to put in, I'm going to look out my window and I'm going to put in something maybe similar to what I can see outside, which is something like a tree line um, going across and maybe on the, on the other side, again, a bank of trees. And when I say a bank of trees, you're not going to see any detail with these trees at all. Um, it's just going to be the, the actual line of the trees that you see there. Um, so... Again, I'm coming forward with this. Um, I'm not really too bothered about getting texture into it, so I'm not going to be too like regimented about making this completely flat, but it's flat enough. Um, and I'm going to make sure that there aren't any like horizontal lines in it, I think. I think that would be a good idea. And I'm going to now dry that layer. OK, that layer is now dry and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to add more pigment into it, um, making it more saturated, bluer in this case. Um, but not. I don't like, generally, I don't like colour straight out of the palette. So um, we are still going to make it a bit more grey than blue, um, but it's definitely going to be more saturated each time we do a layer. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's that's more saturated than that, as you can see. Um, and again, you know, we're just making this up. So we could do some kind of roof shapes um, in the background, you know, rough roof shapes. I live in Snowdonia in Wales. And we're very fortunate that we've got like beautiful landscapes <laughs> outside um, and it's it's a really nice place to live and a great place to um, to paint uh, because you've got all this gorgeous scenery around. So, you know, I'm going to stick in a few things that I can kind of see outside my window. Um, but you're just making this up really and... I mean, it's a spontaneous landscape. You know, some of these are going to work better than others, but it doesn't really matter because it's more about the skills that you're learning rather than um, rather than the actual end product. So this is like the village in the background. The village where I live, there's only, um, I think there's 380 adults on the electoral register here. So it's a really tiny little village. And we moved here um, three years ago and we really love living here it's so gorgeous in the middle of uh, Snowdonia um, I'm going to alter this roof slightly because I think it's a little bit odd looking there we go um, that'll do I'm not going to try and mess with it too much so okay I'm going to go and dry that layer and finally, I'm going to do exactly the same thing again, make it a little bit more saturated, i.e. bluer and a little bit um, more uh, colourful. Oh, sorry, a little bit more saturated, so like darker, basically, and also a bit more colourful, so bluer as well. And I'm going to go with a bit nearer to the original blue with this. Um, I'm going to imagine that I'm standing on a country lane, um, as the lane at the bottom of my house is, and I'm looking out across um, the village 
to the mountains and the trees in the background. I mean, you could do this with an urban landscape quite obviously. You could, um, you know, you you could make it uh, buildings in the background. It's still exactly the same principle. The further away you get, the less saturated um, things become and... Uh, the 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 kind of the less colourful, less detailed things become as well. So here's kind of a bush layer, and because we're now in the front, what I'm what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the actual colour itself, um, and maybe that's a bit too much. These do fade uh, when you're using them anyway, but you've you've got this. Um, you can kind of do this quite nice effect with them where you're dropping them into. Uh, into your um, other colours as well. So that does work quite well with these, actually. I was um, reasonably happy with that. So I'm going a bit um, off piece here, but we've got this kind of, uh, you know, with a little bit more texture and a little bit more colour there. I'm going to dab some of that orange off because I don't like it on that side. Um, you can dab things off again that will give you a bit more texture as well so some of this is just a learning curve and how to do things and how strong and what colours you've got and that kind of stuff but I was quite impressed with how these get this quite nice texture um, that I'm trying to achieve at the front here so I'm going to dry that and then we're going to come in with our last little bit what I did mean to do as well is I meant to um, put something into the sky and I forgot. Um, so I'm going to mix up a very dilute version of this um, colour uh, that we've been using. Uh, try to make it quite grey. And um, I'm just going to put a few little clouds in the sky. So I'm going to use this side because it's very grey and quite watered down. And the sky is always darker at the top, so I'm going to give it a little um, thing at the top like that and maybe an odd cloud. Far be it from me to say that it's cloudy in Snowdonia. It has been actually absolutely chucking it down for about three weeks solidly. So, um, so this does feel rather appropriate that we've got a few little clouds in the sky here. So they're not detailed, just to give the impression of a few clouds. And then the final thing that I'm going to do um, is I'm going to use this Posca marker and I'm going to imagine that we are, again, you know, we're looking at it through the hedgerow. So I'm just going to make sure that this is coming out and I'm going to draw some grasses Um and actually, what I might do is I might take off the masking tape first. So I'm just going to give it a quick blast with the hairdryer and then I'm going to take the masking tape off. So you can see that taking the masking tape off has left us with this nice straight edge. And what taking it off is going to enable me to do is to go out of the um, edge here so I can kind of break uh, the edge with my grasses. Um, I'm going to add in some flowers um, and leaves just to add again it's a little bit of detail at the at the front of the image here um, so we see these kind of fluffy white things in the hedgerows um, which are cow parsley I think and um, they're rather attractive and nice to draw so I'm going to put a few of those in and um, a few different shaped leaves and so on. So it looks as if we're kind of looking through this hedgerow into the, into the distance.
And the reason that I'm using a Posca marker rather than the white of um, the uh, watercolours is that watercolours generally aren't opaque, whereas the acrylic gives an opaque effect. So there you go. That's our little landscape and it's finished. A really simple way to work on your skills around glazing in watercolour and also mixing those neutrals that are so much nicer than the colour straight out of the pan. So I hope you found that useful and that you'll give these paints uh, a little go if you've got them already and use them to make some of those nice landscapes. Please like and subscribe to my channel. It does mean such a lot. And if you've got any comments or questions, I'd love to hear from you. I will reply to everyone and I hope to see you next time.